Welcome to uh, quiz 1b. Uh, let's look at it and uh, go over uh, some things here. Um, what I want you to be able to do for quiz 1b is to transliterate um, and to read aloud Genesis 1-1. Now, I'm not expecting you to be perfect on this uh, transliteration, so don't don't think you have to get all of this. The goal is to get some of it, a little bit. And uh, I think you'll be helped if we look at a native speaker in terms of transliteration. And uh, if you click on the link, it will take you uh, to this YouTube. And um, just listen to him as he reads. Elohim et ha-shamayim ve-et ha-aretz ve-ha-aretz ha-yeta tohu vavohu ve-choshech al pene tehom ve-ruach Elohim merachefet al pene ha-mayim va-yomer Elohim yehi or va-yehi or va-yar Elohim et ha-or kitov Vajabdel Elohim ben Haor uven Hahoshef. Vajikra Elohim la Orion. Vela Hoshech kara laila. Vajhi ere vajhi voker. Yom ehad. So, what we want to uh, get from that, if we just go back to our quiz. What we want to get from that is the realization that uh, the person reading is a native speaker. Um, everything we do, we want to imitate him. Don't imitate me. Um, don't imitate uh, what you think the book. Um, imitate him. He's a fluent uh, speaker, native speaker. And so what we're after is to try to conform what we do to what he does. Now, one help with that will be this transliteration. And so um, if this helps you, then by all means uh, use it. If it doesn't, uh, well, you know, you, you, you don't have to know how to transliterate to read Hebrew. So this is simply something that might help. So let's uh, look at it. So what we're trying to do is get to the place where uh, we can read. Now, uh, when we come to the text, one of the things that we need to just realize right off the bat is when we come to the Hebrew text, there are different things going on. And when we look at the text, the uh, letters that we see, these are called block letters. And so this is called square script or Aramaic script. Uh, it isn't the oldest uh, Hebrew script that we have. That's uh, Paleo Hebrew. There are some other related scripts, but uh, this square script or Aramaic script is what everything in Hebrew is written uh, in now. If you go to a Jewish cemetery, uh, in, you know, on Long Island in New York, and you you look at the headstones, what you're going to see are these these uh, block uh, script. There's a cursive script, there's a paleo, but what we're going to learn is this block script. So it's what the printed documents will have. Now in this text, there are two other things going on. One is the texts are accented. You know, when uh, these texts were read, there was, uh, there's a musical way to read them. And some of these little marks have to do with that. And if I push this button, uh, what I'm going to do is toggle the musical accents off. And so you can see those ones that are going on and off. Those are musical accents. So um, we will not learn the music uh, or the chanting behind it. Uh, we'll... Uh, 
eventually we might get to the place where we can recognize them as stress accents and uh, certainly they'll help us see which uh, syllable to uh, stress but these these um, musical cantate that's not going to be important for us we're going to ignore those now what's left um, is called the pointing and so when the text was written uh, it was written in an unpointed way um, when you uh, come to text in Arabic today it's unpointed when you uh, become fluent in Hebrew and you buy a newspaper in Hebrew it's unpointed but when you're learning the language um, the uh, teachers will give you training wheels uh, to help you understand how to pronounce uh, the letters and these training wheels are called the points uh, so this is a pointed text this is an unpointed text and so um, these points uh, they were added uh, many years later um, uh, when David wrote he had never seen anything that looked like this uh, uh, when Moses wrote he had never seen anything that looked like this this is a convention um, that uh, came down and that we use today to help people as they learn the language uh, with these little dots these points so what are they what do we need to know well um, if we come to the study guide um, what we see in the study guide uh, will be that we will have our text and um, let me just uh, pull a pen up we will have our text and um, we will have it will always be uh, what we're working from will be a pointed text so we're just learning the language so everything that we read uh, will be pointed for us and so what we have to do is not only have we had to learn each individual letter but now we're going to have to add to this this uh, these training wheels that help us uh, learn how to pronounce um, the words and so when we do that um, when we do that we've got to learn the alphabet and we have to learn the points so uh, what should we do well whenever you're studying a language always go back and review what you did before the first time through uh, you're learning a foreign language it's always overwhelming and it doesn't matter what um, uh, foreign language you're learning it's like you jump in and it's like what in the world is all this but the second time through it's easier the third time it's easier so what we have here uh, is the alphabet uh, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, Hay and um, when we look at that you can see that uh, for certain letters uh, you have two different forms these are called the Begadkafat letters well we're coming to uh, Hebrew after thousands of years and uh, the language has changed a little in how it was spoken in those thousands of years just as English has changed and Greek has changed in the other language so in terms of the letters these Gadkafat letters will have two forms and originally originally you can think of these Gadkafat letters um, uh, you can think of them this way that when the Begad Kafat letters had a dot 
and didn't have a dot, they're pronounced two different ways. And here's the rule, the original rule, is that the Bekat-Kafat letters originally, uh, when they didn't have the dot, had an H sound added or kind of a wetter sound. So uh, without the dot, uh, the B is really more a V sound, V, V instead of B. Now, over time, the bag fat letters, uh, so the, originally uh, this big ag fat um, without the dot would be th. Well, over time, three of the big ag fats lost that secondary pronunciation. So uh, the, think of it this way, that the dot takes away that added H sound or the wetter sound. Uh, so when we come through and we're looking, uh, we've got Olive, Bait, Gimel, Dalit, Hay, and the Olive is really a nothing sound. Uh, the Bait, think of it as a B, the Gimel is a G, the Dalit is a D, and the Hay, knowing that uh, some of the Begadkafats, if they have the Dalit, it will take that H sound away. Uh, don't worry about being perfect. We're going to imitate what the native speaker does, and uh, it will become second nature. But uh, just know that that's there in terms of these um, uh, dots. Alf, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, Vav, Zion, Z sound, Chet is, it's almost a Ch, Ch sound. It's about half that, so it's a heavier H. Chet. Chet, tet, yod. My Syriac's getting in the way. Uh, het, tet, yod. Uh, kaf, lamed, mem, nun, samik. Ayan. Ayan. So, olive is uh, just a, a glottal stop, almost silent. Ion is a heavier uh, version of the uh, ion. Pay, so without the dot, uh, it's the pH sound. Uh, with the dot, the dot takes the H sound away. Uh, pay, psadi. Kof, race, originally uh, just one letter, uh, sin, shin. Um, but over time, it developed two pronunciations. Dot on the left, it's a sin. Um, my uh, pretty liberal uh, Hebrew professor told me that, you know, the j joke is sin is always on the left. Uh, maybe to help you remember. Uh, tav, T is in top. And if we were doing the ancient thing, we would add the H sound, but they don't do that anymore. We're following what the native speakers do today. So, um, if we listen to the expert, uh, go back, and uh, here, I'll pull this up again. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aret. והארץ הייתה תוהו ובוהו, וחושך על פני תהום, ורוח אלוהים מרחפת על פני המים. ויאמר אלוהים, יהי אור, ויהי אור. וירא אלוהים את האור כי טוב, ויבדל אלוהים בין האור ובין החושך. ויקרא אלוהים לאור יום. ולחושך קר הלילה, ויהי ערב ויהי בוקר, יום אחד. Okay, so that's our native uh, speaker. That's what you're after. You're after, uh, you want to you sound like him, you want to uh, 
pronounce the letters like him. This transliteration is a way to help us get there. So what we're doing now is translating the little dots into English. So don't think that you have to learn all this. We're going to take several times. We're just kind of uh, getting in the water a little bit. Um, what you what you can look at is there are all kinds of little helps that will decode what these uh, dots mean, these added dots. And so this is from our textbook, Futado. Um, and what makes all this difficult is that because we're coming to the language thousands of years after these things are developed, they've changed over time. And so I'm going to give you several different ways to look at this, and then uh, we'll go back to the native speaker. And remember, uh, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. We want to imitate what he's doing. He's the expert. Uh, he's the native speaker. He's fluent. And so we're going to copy uh, what he does. This is to kind of help us with these training wheels uh, understand what he's doing. So we have a comments, a patak, and a chatef patak, a half patak. And uh, these are all A-class vowels. Um, and originally, they had a slightly different pronunciation. You can see that today, they're all exactly the same. They're the ah sound as in father. So if you put this underneath a comments, you get the ah sound. If you put a patak, you get a shorter version, but it's still the ah sound. And if you have a chatef patak, that's a half, whatever this is. Uh, what we're going to do is just, we're going to call them all ah for now. These are A-class vowels. When we come to the next three, we come to E-class vowels. Um, a serre, a segol, and a chatef segol. So a serre, um, a segol, and a half segol. Se uh, Notice that these are all basically the same sound. Uh, a serre, you can hear that's a little longer. Segol, eh, eh. Serre, eh. All right. So basically the same sound. A as in they, eh as in bet. A little difference there. And then the eh, kind of the half version of that, if you get a hatev, a uh, sigol. Uh, sorry about the horn there. Uh, it's move in day at Bryan College. Uh, and it's wonderful to see all the uh, people coming to campus. Um, when we come to the I class vowels, we have a hiric, and it's the I as in hit, hiric, I. A hiric yod is E, so that that is a different one uh, there. So this is, is B. This is B. A cholum, cholum, it's that uh, fuller H uh, sound. Uh, that's why it's spelled colum, cholum. Uh, so this is bow, cholum uh, vav, same thing, bow. Then we get to the U class, a uh, kibbutz, the U as in uh, the U uh as in put kibbutz, uh, a shiruk is the U as in rule, so this is boo, u, ba, boo, and then uh, uh, comments hatuf is going to be um, an O class vowel, uh, ah, pronounced. Odd. Okay, 
So that's Futado. That helps you uh, memorize it that way. Other people have summarized it this way. Uh, Be with uh, uh, Shva uh, is Be with a raised E or upside down E. Uh, what they're telling you is that's just Be, eh, very short sound. Ba, Ba, Ba. Uh, the last one, it should be half what the previous one was. They're all Ba. Um, bay, bay, um, slightly longer sound here. Um, be, then half, whatever uh, be is. Bo, bo, boo, boo, be, and be. Now, if that helps you, memorize that. Um, in terms of a chart, the best chart I've seen is maybe something like this, where you do an A, E, I, O, and U. And historically, long vowels are all a combination um, of a pointing vowel and a letter. Um, this may go back to uh, the language when they were transitioning between an unpointed text and a text to get a little help. They started using helping vowels, uh, mater lectionis, a mother of reading. And so this may go back to that. Um, if this helps you, uh, these are all unchangeably long vowels. And if you just remembered A-E-I-O-U, in terms of transliteration, all those have the little hat, the little pointy hat. That's how you can remember it. Ah for father, A as in they, E as in she, uh, Elohim, uh, okay, uh, O as in snow, and U as in rule. So all of these, uh, the, do, the um, a vowel mark and a letter, unchangeably long uh, syllable. Now if you just get to the long, the long A, E, I, O, and U, notice the difference in uh, transliteration is you go from the little pointy hat, that's the first one, to the flat roof over all of them, A-E-I-O-U, flat roof over all of them. Uh, these are just the uh, long letters by themselves. Uh, comet, uh, Sere, Hirik, uh, Holum, uh, Kibbutz. All right? When you have a short version of this, and again, don't think you have to get all this the first time. We're just kind of uh, uh, looking at it. Um, a short A, short E, short I, short O, short U. Notice this is just A, E, I, O, U, nothing over it. So go to the pointy hat, the flat roof, the nothing. And then we have the half vowels, have the little sombrero uh, on it. You can think of that. Uh, ah, eh, eh, just a short little sound, um, a short little O as in odd. Now, whichever one of those makes sense to you, uh, Futado, the simplified version. Once you know that, you can come back and now the transliteration will help you. So remember that we have uh, cantillation marks and vowels, so we're ignoring the cantillation marks. So what we get is um, 
bed. Let me um, just draw here. So what we have is we have be. So you're going to have to read it up and down. And then you go, once you read that, then you go to the next one and you read it up and down. So, be, re, sheet. And so you've got your upside down, you've got your long mark. Uh, this is how you do the nothing of the olive. Um, you have the H, uh, S, H, version of the shin so that's how you do that and then you have the sh um, the unchangeably long sheet bare sheet bare sheet bara so bara as you've got the dot so it's not the v sound it's just the B. It's not that heavy one that has the H sound. It's the V. And then you have uh, Ra. Notice you've got your your uh, long uh, vowel. And then you've got um, your Aleph. And then we have the word for God. Uh, so God has that Hatev Sigol. Uh, eh. Lo, heem. Uh, so that's not a vowel. That's uh, part of the cantillation marks. So we get uh, eh, lo, heem. Et. Boy, et is our friend. Uh, et uh, is the direct object marker, uh, definite uh, direct object marker. Uh, in the beginning... He created. Who is the He? The He is Elohim. What did He create? He created Hashemayim, the heavens, and He created Et. So, see, we've got this word repeated in the word. This is the word and, and Haaretz. So. What I want you to be able to do um, on the quiz is to be able to read this aloud, but uh, somehow I want you to be able to approximate it in writing. So uh, if you can get a few of these, um, we're only doing these five words, and uh, it's pronounced Bereshit Bara. Elohim et hashamayim va et haaretz. Uh, what you want to do in this second quiz is get as as much of that as you can. I'm not expecting you to be perfect. Um, uh, I want you to hear me here. This is a, a journey we're making together, and uh, the goal is to be able to volume read. And um, you don't have to know the transliteration to be able to volume read. You don't have to know you know, what's a historically long, uh, what's a short, um, it's going to help you. That's why we're going to do it. But um, uh, these just training wheels, just something to help us learn the language. So you don't have to be perfect, uh, but you want to master as much of it as you can. And so uh, this will be um, kind of what we do for... Uh, 1B, Quiz 1B. Um, I'll put the documents uh, in Brightspace and in the link in YouTube. And um, if you have any questions, come by my office. And I hope you have a great week. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon.